it's 10.31 Eastern time, so let's get started. Um, happy belated New Year to everyone. Um, glad 2020 is finally out of the way. Welcome to another Open Cluster Management Community meeting. Um, this year, we have lots of new exciting things coming up, but today's agenda is going to be focused on the ANS group and how its IT team is planning to use Open Cluster Management to so solve some of the challenges that they face when managing multiple Kubernetes clusters. So we are really thrilled to have Yong Feng and Jing Ming from the AND group to talk about their use cases and integration or plan for integration. So I'm going to let um, you guys introduce yourself and please take it away, uh, Jing Ming. Okay, thank you. So uh, before I get started, uh, I'd love to uh, make sure if, um, so I, I see Chiu Chen is already present in the meeting room. And how about Yong? Hey Yong, are you are you in the meeting room? Um, seems like not. Okay. Um, he just joined. Uh, uh, Yong just joined. So okay, I, I just pasted a, a, a link in in the chatting board. Um, so the content is um, basically um, the use cases and the um, problems we are facing in on group um, in terms of um, you apply um, using deploying open cluster management in our production environment. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, the background is that um, actually we have already landed to uh, Kubifed V2, if you, if you guys already know about it. Um, so, the, um, uh, we, we are basically using Kubifed V2 to um, manage our applications running on the Kubernetes cluster. Um, every application needs to be um, deployed and um, upgraded. Um, um, so, so um, we uh, basically we have um, ten, six uh, k nodes and six uh, c k pods in 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 our, in one of our um, biggest cluster. Uh, yeah, and have a um, we have a slightly different topology uh, in um, managing applications, which is named. Um, LDC um, logical data center. So um, the thing is that um, LDC is basically we are um, cutting cutting the data, uh, physical data centers vertically into um, multiple parts and uh, and every, every part every 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 piece of the um, uh, every part of the uh, data center is uh, in that um, managing a um, um, a self-managed um, middle, middleware, so that, so that the um, applications are which is running um, in, in the microservices systems can um, can deploy it uh, all together. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, so we we are, um, we already had Kubifed V2 in our um, production environment in. Uh, but the use cases is basically general, or for example, the um, cluster management. In <laughs> so the cluster management management basically covers um, deploying and registering a cluster, a, a new cluster, automatically. Um, uh, in the past, uh, what we uh, what we have to do um, to register a, a, a cluster to the Kubefab V2 control plan is basically. Um, Taking out a service, uh, if I remember correctly, it's um, we, we have to take out a service service account token from from the um, managed cluster and create a um, what is that? Um, could be could be fed cluster um, CR CRs custom resource into the um, uh, into the could be fed V2 control plan cluster. So it's um, the process is ba basically driven by the um, could be fed V2 admins and um, by leveraging open cluster management, we hope to 
make the whole process more automatically. And uh, ideally, I, I, we hope the um, clusters can be um, registered re registered to our federation control plan without without any hiccups. Um, that, that's the plan. And uh, we had a few POCs in in our offline environments, and um, so o OCM is like um, the the cluster, the process of registering and unregistering a cluster is a is a bit different from um, Kubify V2, uh, which I will expand later in in the um, uh, in the following uh, uh, items. So so that that's um, that's um, cluster management and um, as for cluster management and uh, we we also we, we we also hope to uh, manage the process of unregistering a cluster from the um, from the federation control plane. Uh, so so um, in, in the past in the Kubifed V2, um, there's there's no clear process of um, the un, unregistering a cluster from the federation control plane. Um, for for example, if we are Deleting a cluster from federation, um, the uh, there will be some something um, left. There will there will be um, or there will always be something left like garbages left in the local clusters. Um, so so uh, um, so so one of the use cases that we hope to um, uh, unregister the cluster without leaving any garbages in the local cluster. And I believe um, that's the um, current capabilities so provided by the um, open cluster management. Um, yeah, and let's move on to the next um, use case. It's um, application management. Yes, uh, as for the application management, I, I think we had like about uh, 10K applications Min, uh, we've lost your audio. Um, I think Min disconnected. Hopefully, he'll come say, back. We've lost, him. we've lost him completely. Okay. Hello. Yep. Okay. Um, sorry, it's, the network is a bit unstable here. <laughs> um, so uh, where where did I disconnect it? I, I don't um I don't I don't know just about you, you just started to say you had ten thousand apps uh, that you were managing today. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So the applications have to be um managed um by the Federation control plane. So I think um the the thing is um the thing is that um we, we need a unified model of applications so that um, every applications can be defined. Uh, the, the application models can be applied to um, all the e existing applications running in our cluster. So the the uh, the application models has to be um, extensible and flexible um, so that uh, it can apply to other use cases. Uh, so. Uh, so um, yeah, basically. Um, deploying a uh, application is um, can be uh, is basically a, a process of um, deploying a, for example, a deployment or replica set into the cluster. So um, if if the federation can um, help can can um, can help us to uh, deploy the replicas or deployments um, uh, on the fly, um, if if the uh, whole process can be um, can be uh, well controlled by the federation control plan, then that will be um, that will be good for uh, our use cases. <laughs> so um, yeah, and that's the application management. I think um, we we are planning to like um, we, yeah the the um, okay no, <laughs> never mind I will let's skip that part. Uh, 
the 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 uh the next thing is troubleshooting. Yeah. Um so so the the thing is um distributed tracing. Um so the 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 um the tough part of federation is that um so the federation control plane is a dedicated Kubernetes cluster. So if if we um if we are managing the local Kubernetes clusters with another with a single Kubernetes cluster, we have to manage the relationship between the um between two different two two uh, uh, two dedicated clusters. For example, if we if the um, federation cluster starts a request um, to to the local uh, to the local starter uh, to to the local cluster to um, to deploy a replica set, uh, we have to know how the um, how 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 the local cluster is actually processing the um, the, the deployed replica set so so that the full process can be um, can be observed by the um, the main and the federation control plan. Um, otherwise, the, um, the the deployed replicas can be um, less lost contact with our um, federation control plan. Um, that that will make the um, application deploy deploying process um, uh, invisible or unclear. So um, we have to make sure everything's uh, getting monitored without um, any risk. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I think the the topic of distributed tracing is um, currently um, so th there are some POC works as far as I know in the uh, another project named the Control Runtime. I think I, I see there are some, some guys. Uh, trying to plumbing the distributed tracing, um, the the contact distributed tracing contexts to the uh, to the framework so that um, multiple controllers can uh, propagate the context um, to another controller. Um, I I don't know um, how their process goes, uh, but uh, yeah, I think ideally the uh, federation control plan can. Um, can manage to I can visualize the uh, relationship between the federation control plane and the local control plane, so that um, we can know what is going on behind the be, behind the scene behind the federation cookie cutoff. Um, so um, let's move on to the problems we we had we faced the um, currently. Um, yeah, the. So as you as you see, the first the first item is um, scalability. I think that's the um, biggest re re reason that drive us moving on to the um, open cluster management. Because um, in the past, the Kubi Fed V2 has a uh, has a problem of scalability. It's um, as um, if I remember correctly, the Kubi Fed V2 control plan is getting extremely slow uh, if there are more than Thirty clusters connecting to the federation control plane. Um, the uh, for for example, the federation control plane um, can uh, can propagate the replicas to the local cluster. If if there are too many clusters connecting to the federation, the the, the process of deploying replicas can be can can be taking more than like uh, tens of seconds. Uh, that's um, that's unbearable for for our uh, pass for, for our internal pass platform. Uh, yeah, so uh, we we had a we had a metric showing that um, the 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 occupied resources by our uh, federation control plane. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, ideally we can uh, leverage more. Uh, we, we can manage more local clusters with uh, less resources. That's um, that's the, uh, that's that's the goal. Um, and the, the the second problem is the deep debuggability. So um, we we had we we had a problem that, or for example, we have many. Um, custom operators running in our local clusters, 
and see um, and, and we are uh, for, for example for Kobe 5 v2 um, if we had a custom resource for the local cluster then we will have a federated custom resource for our um, for in our federation cluster as a aggregated, aggregated view uh, but the thing is that if something is wrong um, something gets wrong in the local cluster it's a bit um, it's a bit um, it's a bit tough to understand what, what is uh, what, what is going on in the local cluster because um, for um, practically for if we are running if we are debugging a um, custom resource oper operators um, we are we are mostly debugging by reading the logs from the uh, 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 reading the logs from the custom operator or um, reading the attached events on the custom resource is it is it right but um, that that's um, sadly invisible by the federation control plan so um, we don't we don't have a we have we do have a aggregated view for uh, for the resources but we don't we don't have the a aggregated view for debugging the local clusters um, if we can um, understand uh, how if we have capabilities of debugging um, local clusters uh, in the aggregated view that will be super helpful to improve the efficiency so that um, um, so that the uh, propagation resource propagation process can be uh, under control Mm, the, the the third item is progressively operation across clusters. Yeah. Um, so um, the um, as mentioned earlier, the high availability is the top requirement in ONS group. Um, uh, yeah. The um, um, so so everything in in the federations are managed are and running. In a declarative approach, and um, but um, practically in, in in our production, we hope to um, run the uh, we we hope to manage the federated resources in a uh, progress in a progressively uh, in a progressive way, so that uh, for example, we need can can we release um, we need to um, Control the process of progress of releasing uh, a, a newer version of uh, resources. Uh, for example, we need to, um, if we had three clusters managed by the Fer Federation Control Plan, um, then uh, there, there can be cases that um, we, we, we only want to deploy one resource to one cluster and wait for a while to see what is happening if there um if we if there are anything getting wrong then we roll back um, um if everything's okay we we will move on to the le uh, to the remaining clusters um that that's the um progressive um operations um we are talking about <laughs> uh yeah um and the fourth item is um, too many CRDs. Yeah. Uh, if you if you ever tried Kubi 5 v2, um, you can see that there are um, too many federated uh, full and bars uh, custom resources, and all these um, custom resources are uh, <coughs> uh, sadly the 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 cold hard fact is that all these all of these federated resources is not. Um, the, the the open API schema is not re really tidy because um, they are all generated they are all machine generated by the um, builder. Uh, we found that the uh, uh, the generated CRDs by the um, Kobe Fed V2 community is not uh, actually usable for um, some of our cases, and we found that it's because that um, the there, there's something wrong with the open API schema. Um, it's, um, it's, 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 it's really painful to find out the, to, to read through the, um, the long open API schemas to find out what, what, what's the, what, what is wrong. Mm. Um, the, the, the fifth 
item is placement policy. Um, yeah, if if we have um, so so um, if the more clusters we we are wiring to the federation um, control plan, um, we we have to um, leverage some some templating engines um, so, or some other uh, templating languages to to um, to to write the resource um, efficiently. Uh, otherwise, the uh, otherwise the resources um, across the clusters will um, will be written in the whole lump. The the YAMLs will be getting extremely long. Um, so so um, the the pla we, we need a efficient placement policy so that um, we we can express the um, the goal of um, how how we feel like how we hope hope to um, to craft the or target resource efficiently. <laughs> and the, the last item is um, high availability of control plane. Um, yeah, in I think that's the um, um, that's the first thing we um, uh, we are thinking of in in terms of deploying the federation control plane in. Production environments because um, we we always need to make keep, keep, um, keep an eye on the um, availability. Otherwise, the uh, the accidents will be uh, happy, happening. Uh, so so uh, the goal is that um, the the high availability of a control plan has to be considered as the um, part of the design. Um, as as for the uh, uh, as for the, uh, the the last we we'd like to um, talk about is is a potential feature request, um, which is the uh, imperative cluster management. Um, because um, uh, for now the federation control plan is um, basically um, providing the extensibilities for the users um, to to manage the uh, resources in a declarative approach, but um, sometimes that's not um, enough for for the practical use because um, we need to for for some cases we need to um, directly interact with the clusters um, imperatively. Uh, for example, um, we uh, we need to um, read the resources across the clusters proactively. Um, if, if everything is managed, if everything is running declaratively, um, we have to, for example, um, we we are, uh, um, for example, we have we have to um, deploy deploy a, a resource. Then we then then we so that we can uh, read the status of the resource. Um, I think that's not possible for some cases because. Um, Sometimes we we'd like to know that we have we um, we'd like to have a peek on the um, current status of the resource, then um, then take our strategies. Mm. So so um, I think that's the missing parts of either um, could be fed V two or open cluster management. Um, if um, if we uh, we, if we have a approach, collaborative approach to manage the clusters, that will be super helpful for cluster federation cluster admins. Um, uh, I think that's all I want to go talk about. through this. How would you? We've covered you've covered a lot of information. It's it's awesome. Um, how would you like to? kind of take it step by step. There's some things that I think there are simple answers that might help. And then there are some things that we can just kind of go through and validate where we have gaps. How, how would you like to proceed? Um, um, I think currently the current status of open cluster management um, has already solved the most of the problems we had, but it's, um, um I think the current status is 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 basically 
um, usable for for most of our cases. It's that um, the, the the problems we had is that um, it is only applied um, applying to the 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 corner cases. Um, okay. So. Well, maybe we'll yeah. if we start from the bottom of your document and then we'll work back up. Um, I will. Um, or how would you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, yeah, that that works for me. Okay. So, and and I say kind of starting at the bottom because there are solutions that I think will address your imperative need. Uh, we historically have, have also found uh, use cases that required that. Would you mind if I uh, share just for a moment? Sure, sure. Thank you. And I'm going to pull up a copy of your doc as well, just so I can reference it as we go through. All right. So, let me go back window here. Sorry, you may not see it. I've got the video window that was on top of my other screens. So, in particular, these two items, querying and reading resources across clusters using an imperative means, and then accessing non-resource endpoints uh, and even kind of specific ability to probe. So, first off, in the organization uh, of Opal Cluster Management, there's a project called Multi-Cloud Operators Foundation. And there are some projects that, that we have not yet been able to get fully open source, but everything, the goal and the roadmap is that everything becomes open source. Some of it is we're trying to make sure that when we open something up, it can support accepting pull requests in the community, that it's got clean docs so that a developer could set it up locally. And, you know, like any, uh, project, there's some things that we think we could just make more consumable uh, for, for users who are new to it. But this project is already open. Uh, it's available. Uh, you should be able to, to pick it up and, and play with it. And there are two CRDs that are part of this project that I think will address your use case. The first of them is managed cluster. Actually, I'm going to do view first. Managed cluster view. This CR allows you to create basically a kind of query and i will drop these links in the chat as well oh perfect uh, mike sorry beat me to it thank you mike um manage cluster view uh, basically forms a kind of query this cr will exist in the namespace of the managed cluster it will be picked up by uh, the clusterlet, by part of the clusterlet, uh, one of the clusterlet controllers. That will basically retrieve the information that's desired, and then you'll get back a payload. There's a, a limitation here that if you try to query something that is too broad, it's plausible, it's possible that the result that you query might be too large to store in its CD. And there is a part of, of, um, of ACM, the product, that we will be open sourcing in OCM, the project, around search. And we, we have a search index because we can't do this for everything. We kind of do this for very targeted. I want a specific level of detail for a specific resource. Let me go and retrieve that through this type of API call. And it's expected that once you get the result back, that our typical API pattern is that we will then delete the CR that retrieved that value. So we'll create it. It'll take a period of time until it gets updated with a result. The consumer will use that result, and then we typically go back and delete the CR. If you leave it, and uh, I think we've got Shojin on, he can keep me honest here, but if we leave the resource, then it'll just get reconciled over a period of time, and the result will be kept up to date. So if it's something that you always want to have available, you can kind of leave it in that and just leave the CR in existence and it'll continue to get reconciled over time. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think, um, so this one is uh, mostly used to 
to query a single resource with a certain name and namespace, um, partly because we cannot store a large amount of data in the SCD and uh, also because um, if there's a list option in the view that will be that there will be scalability issues it's a, especially in your case like and you might have 3k uh, 3k nodes in one clusters and um, if you want to uh, can query a certain type of resource with uh, a count of 1k that might not be uh, suitable for the uh, Kub API server to handle that. Um, but I think one thing that I want to ask is like, uh, when you want to query all things like that, do you want to have a centralized store to um, save them or uh, you want them more on demand query to the, to the local cluster? Um, are, are you saying aggregating the multiple resources into one federated view? Is, is that, is that uh, what, what, what do you mean by central store? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think the, um, so I think the thing is like, um, do you want to list all the resources on one cluster and store them on mm -hmm. a centralized place or uh, it's um, just like, it's on demand query. Um, I think that can be a potential use case, but as far as I know, um, projecting single resource in, into the Federation control plan will be sufficient for our use. Um, yeah, most, okay. mostly we are doing things like, for example, if we have, if we have a federated um, deployment, if we are deploying a deployment to multiple clusters, then um, um, so for, for, for some reason, well, for, for the observability, we have to project the local pause to the Federation cluster so that uh, we can keep an, keep an eye on the uh, current, the, the real-time status of the managed pod. Uh, other, um, so so um, that, that's our case, but um, I think, um, it, for for that case, I think um, the pod name is not known because uh, because um, we, we don't know the name of the um, deployment uh, for, of, yeah. of a deployment after its provision. Um, yeah, yeah. So so sorry. I think <laughs> the, the listing the listing case is valid for our use case. Um, hi, hi, Chou, hi, Chou Diang. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. This, this, this is a common problem uh, I faced when I play with the uh, OCM. Uh, for most of the cases, we we don't have a central storage to to persist the uh, manage manage the cluster uh, object such as deployment service. So if we have the List API to query the target uh, main cluster resource is better for for us to use the OCM. Yeah, um, yeah. I think as Michael has mentioned that um, uh, we we probably in 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 our uh, so, so not that has not been open sourced, but uh, mm, we have a component which is called search uh that yes, is I know. going to... I, I know but uh, if if you post the management cluster data to the search uh, search component uh, that will be the uh, time window time window issue when we okay. when, when, when start the query from when start the query from the Control plan. So in your case, um, providing search doesn't solve your use case because you want a real time result for that particular set of data from a cluster under management. 
Did I yeah. sort of play back what I heard? Okay. And so I think that means what you're what we would need to do is accommodate um, some style of list behavior for managed cluster view. And as Jojen pointed out, we've been very sensitive about this object potentially overwhelming the valid size of what we can store in etcd. And so I think if we did support lists, for the most part, we're probably fine, but at your scale, you'd probably need list with pagination as well, right? Um, if I if I remember correctly, the um, in the past, the Kubi Fat V2 is actually watching the local clusters. And just as I said, um, the, the scalability issues will be um will be suffering because um if we are watching like more more than 10 clusters um then the the watching events will be overwhelming um the the, the um i think uh pulling the pulling the status uh, with, with a fixed interval will be uh, will be uh, um, will be work will be a workaround for the scalability issues okay well and what you just said is part of the reason why our search model uses an eventually consistent index. Our collectors will send data back to the hub and they are more intelligent about when and how often they send updates to avoid overwhelming the hub. And the data then remains not in an in-memory cache with an informer, but as part of a Redis graph database. So, and, and for our use cases, we tolerate that the query might be out of sync by a brief window of time. Typically, you know, order of minutes, maybe. It's no longer than that. Um, generally, maybe less than that, but that's probably what we would typically see. So let me, let me take the, I, um, I'm gonna try to drop notes in the chat, and Mike, if you'll help me remember, let's see if we can grab the chat transcript. So managed cluster view may help, and I noted that there's an RFP that we'd want to capture on list behavior. Managed cluster action is the other side of it, which allows you to perform create, update, and delete behavior on objects. And so you can basically provide a manifest that you want to apply, and then you could uh, define whether you're creating, updating, deleting, and then this will return the result of it. We've used this, I think your use case was access non-resource endpoints. That one may not directly address your need for that type of query, but this manage cluster action is another kind of resource that acts imperatively. You define it, when it is reconciled, it's just running the command, the apply command that you've given it, and then it returns a result. The other question around the metrics, we have capabilities that we've been building to integrate Thanos, and we expect that we'll be open sourcing that in the spring, I think is the current timeline. And in that model, instead of having our hub attempt to scrape the metrics and help endpoints for managed clusters. We update Prometheus on the managed cluster to write data back to a Thanos data store that is running on the hub. So the scraping occurs on the managed cluster and metrics are then sent back into the hub. And we've got some work that we wanna enhance around how we do alerting and other behavior for that. So. If this type of information was collected by Prometheus locally and sent into a data store like Thanos, would that meet your use case? Or do you think that you really still want to have the ability to scrape these endpoints directly from the hub? Um, um, just for clarification, um, the, the scraping the metrics endpoint, I'm, um, I'm, I'm talking about scraping metrics from the Kubi API server instead of the applications or nodes, because yeah. in our cluster, in our clusters, the, um, the API servers and the nodes are, are running in different overlay networks. Um, so the, um, just, um, I think 
uh, so, um, Thanos will be definitely helpful. Um, but um, yeah, because um, every Thanos agent will be uh, can can definitely access the API server endpoints. Um, yeah, I think that 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 will uh, work around the the case. And we do send back. Uh, if not all, I think a subset of the kube state metrics as well. So you should get access to some of that information on the health of the Kubernetes control plane within a managed cluster. And then for the upgrading and probing agents, upgrading, I think, managed cluster action should allow you to deliver a Kubernetes payload if needed. Um, on an imperative style, like if you wanted to patch in a change, we sometimes use cluster action to do that type of behavior rather than a manifest work object. When you say probing, is that something that based on what you've seen with viewer action, you think could be addressed? Or when you say probe, is there some other part of that use case that I'm misunderstanding? Um. By probing, um, I, I mean um, like operating, uh, for example, attaching labels um, or something else like that. But but I have another minor question because um, you just mentioned um, manage the cluster actions. Um, I, I wonder how these actions are delivered to the local cluster. Is that, will there be uh, another agent executing the actions? So on, I'm trying to think if we've got, let me see, in community here. So, um, so if there, um, sorry. The net is yeah, that we, there's we, an agent that's running that behavior. Uh, Cho Jen, do you want to take that question and kind of walk through the cluster lit? I was going to see if I could find an arc diagram that shows the flow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, we have another agent that, um, that is for the for the cluster actions and the view. Um, that is different from the manifest work agent. So we basically use a manifest work to do to deploy that agent. Uh, after so oh yeah. So I get it. We are we are using the work agent to operate to upgrade the action agent. Then we then um the other way around we use the action agent to operate upgrade the work agent. Am I right? Um, that's right for the first one, like we use a uh, work agent to upgrade to the action agent, but, uh, today we don't, we don't have the, a clear way to upgrade the work one, work agent. So that work agent, um, today it is, uh, so somehow you can use the uh, ORM to upgrade that, um, big, uh, open. Open life, uh, oh, sorry, oh, operator lifecycle manager, um, which is a package management used uh, for the operator um, to upgrade the the work agent. Or uh, in our implementations today, we uh, upgrade work agent by itself. So something like we define a manifest work um, that deploy the work agent and then when we upgrade that manifest work the work agent actually upgrade itself so there's certain there's some issues in that um but uh that's what we did today um yeah uh so 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 um you're um upgrading managing the work agents using a using the by by the definition of a managed cluster work, a manifest. So, so yeah. you're using the manifest to man manage the manifest agent. I think the yeah. um that 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 will be working if everything goes happy. But what 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 if there are some failures um failure that abort the upgrading process of the agents? Then then that that will makes the um agent disconnected mm -hmm. from the federation control plane. I think that that will be yeah, that it's um, it's like it, everything will be happy in the happy pass, but um, yeah. if anything goes wrong, the the um, yeah. there, there will be. A... <laughs> uh, 
I think, um, yeah. but, but it's yeah. really a tricky issue, I think. It's, it's fair feedback. What we try to do is, um, first off, we just go through enough testing in lower environments. If we're going to, when we ship a product release, right, we're going through canary tests to try to validate the agent upgrade paths. Uh, and even then, it's not impossible that there's some failure that occurs. Today, we have tried to avoid the hub directly making an API call down to the managed cluster. There are, there's at least one exception that exists today when we fetch logs, but in general, we try to avoid that. Um, what we're really trying to do is to allow that call home model. And that means that we're putting more work or putting more behavior in the agent to pull an update rather than trying to force it down. And so today, uh, with as the project currently stands, if the uh, clusterlet agent or the supporting agents that it creates and installs fail in a way that they can't resolve it on their own or we can't resolve it through a change with manifest work, then you have to invoke a, a human to go and debug and resolve the agent connectivity problem. So that's true. Um, that may be a good area to look at an RFB. If we come up with some good use cases where we might trigger failure and then what the hub might do to then go and reset the agent back to a, a good working state. Um, the, maybe the best thing about it is that the agent itself today is, is stateless. So if we're able to tear down the uh, pods that are running and reapply an older version that was running correctly, then basically rerunning the import command will likely fix uh, a broad array of issues there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I tried to capture a few notes and um, if if others want to add to those, uh, I, I, I if you, you want to help me drop them in the um, the community meeting note page, if I just start kind of working my way up, HA of control plane, I wanted to kind of poke on this one. Today, virtually all the components will, and I, I can't think if there's any exceptions, definitely for everything that's in the registration operator, all of the components will deploy with anti-affinity placement uh, preferences across availability zones and then across nodes and cluster if availability zones are not present. What we have struggled with historically, you know, we in, in prior iterations of the project, we had built high availability solutions, which leveraged multiple clusters to give the hub the ability to tolerate the failure of an entire cluster. What we struggled with is the consistency of desired state, um, index state for search, other information across those various clusters, right? That, that problem is, it would, it would exist where individual hubs that are trying to co-manage a fleet could fail. My question to you, with high availability across availability zones within a single cluster, does that meet your expectations for high availability on the hub? Or is there a goal that you have to support cluster or region high availability where a control plane of the fleet is running across multiple hubs, multiple clusters? And Min, does that question make sense? Oh, sorry, sorry. I was um, distracted from from other messages. Um, I'm, I'm I'm so sorry. Um, can can you um, repeat your no question? So my question is around for high availability of the control plane. Are you satisfied with high availability across availability zones, or is this also an ask to support high availability across regions where the control plane of the fleet is running on multiple clusters? Um. Um, yeah, um, it's the uh, high availability across the regions because um, we have um, multiple data centers across the region 
in um um i think um for for in a single region for for in, in a single region the availability can be basic basically covered by the um um high availability of at the city itself but um there will be issues if um if there if if it's a um multi region federation control plan because um at at c d clusters doesn't um doesn't actually work in higher in a higher availability higher availability approach in multi regions because of the latencies or um other affecting aspects um yeah um i think it's um yeah so so um ideally i think um the if OCM can um, handle the high availabilities across the regions, like um, 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 like having a central consistent store for the um, data for the for, for the underlay data. So maybe what I suggest, let's go into a little more detail on this one and describe what we think potential failure modes would be. For example, mm -hmm. if I had mm -hmm. two regions, region one and region two, that each are running a hub, and they each have mm -hmm. a fleet that is contained to region one and a fleet that is contained to region two, would I ever expect that in the event that the region one fleet control plane failed, that clusters from region one would attempt to fall back on the region two control plane. And we've yeah. struggled with that as a use case. Uh, we have implemented solutions to it in the past. The level of complexity required to operate it caused us to take a step back from trying to make that a, a reality. Um, Cho Jen has, has delved into this problem quite a lot uh, in, in particular. So I'd, I'd love to maybe just kind of write down the specifics of what we think the correct failure modes and reactions would be. You know, in some sense, I think it kind of violates the dependency. Um, if you're trying to have a proper set of fault domains, I would not expect that the control plane or any object in the, in the cloud would cross into a separate region because then I think you're adding dependencies and now the failure in one region could affect behavior in, in, in a second independent region, right? A fleet from region one all attempting to fall back on the hub from region two, for the sake of argument, maybe you end up overwhelming the hub in region two. So the failure in region one causes a cascade failure to region two. Those types of things are what we kind of struggled with. So I'd like to just maybe let's write down, you know, we, we definitely are supporting high availability across AZs, across availability zones today within a cluster out of the box that will, that will come. But we have not done a lot around multi-region availability uh, that's in the project. We've, we've experimented with that in the past, but we haven't got it to a point where we thought we were comfortable calling it generally available. All right. And then just to be conscious of time, I think we've got about five minutes left. Um, is it possible uh, if I can make a copy of this document uh, as well, but I was wondering if we add the ability to add comments, we could um, pick up some of the discussion offline as well in comments in the doc. And then I think sure, what, sure, I would, sure. what I'd love is to get to a point where we have a few kind of like we are talking about down here or with HA, where we have a few very specific goals that we want to try to work through to deliver enhancements and then work through the enhancements repo to document those, get more specific, prioritize them. Like among the feedback in the document, what is the biggest roadblock to adoption, right? And we've kind of talked about some of the RFEs some of these I think we can help with right away um, just by kind of uh, you go and try cluster view, cluster action, and then for the ones that um, need enhancements like list behavior, let's document that as an RFE and then work through the process to, um, to see if we could support it. Uh, 
um, is there is there some place we can save the link of the documentation so that we, we can extend our or, or uh, attract more more um, users to the um, to the discussion? Yeah, so we'll do a couple of things. So in there is the um, meeting note doc that uh, is in the chat here, and I dropped in a link to your document here as well. And then after mm -hmm. the meeting, I think Mike will likely post links into the Slack channel that's in the Kubernetes team for anyone who's watching there. And then we'll upload the recording to YouTube as well for people to watch offline. Um, and then, you know, I'll probably at least send a few tweets out, maybe others will as well, just to, to make folks aware that it's going on. Uh, I expect that sometime in the near future on SIG multi-cluster, we can highlight that we've had, you know, we're beginning these discussions and see if folks are interested in, in collaborating here as well. So I think for, so in terms of the comments, are you okay opening up comment access on the doc? Sure, sure, we'll do, um, yeah. I thought I already did that. Um, no worries. It may have just been when I loaded it. It uh, I can view it. I just can't actually drop a comment on. Maybe mm -hmm. others can, but I just was not able to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Updated now. Everyone can um, leave comments on the documentation. Excellent. So, do you think that you would? Um, for the next meeting, do you want to go and uh, prototype whether multi-cluster, excuse me, manage cluster view and manage cluster action begin to address part of the RFP requirements that you have? Yeah. Okay. And then separately, we can work on uh, documenting what we think some of the high availability failure modes should be as well, and then look at how we would um, turn that into a, an RFP. Sure, thank you. That would be helpful. So Jen or Mike, did you guys have anything else you wanted to, to hit? No, I'm good. To Jen? No. All right. Um, this has been a great conversation. Um, thanks again, Jen Ming, Michael, and Ku Jen for taking the time today. Um, the next meeting will take place in two weeks from now on January 21. Um, if there's no more questions, um, take care, guys. Bye. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, man. Thank you.